guy just picked up this three-point PTO driven finish mower. Let's throw it on the tractor and see if the thing works. Probably not. I've always wanted one of these and finally found a deal on the face space there. Of course I bought her sight on scene. It's a Bueller Farm King 60 inch and that's where these really are valuable is, you know, the productivity, but you lose a lot of the agility because you're on a three point, of course, and then turning radius is up to your tractor and all of that. But this actually has aired tires. It does not have like the chain drag in the back. That would be an extra. It does have the scalp wheel or the anti-scalp wheel up front here. That's nice. That's so you don't dig the front of the deck into the ground. And again, it's PTO driven. Height is adjustable by these couplers, spacers. I don't know. Nail was free, the guy said. So that's good. Don't have to fix that. But basically, where that would go is right on the back of the GT500 here. Mount on this three point. This one is PTO driven. So that PTO there is powered by this lever right here on and off. So I want to put that on here and then we can mold this up really fast as well as all this grass out here and there's a chunk on the other side. And we also have some property in North Dakota. It's about 20 acres. Most of that is also grass. So if we decide to take that up there, this is going to be paramount. Or is that a band? I think it's both. I'm not sure. Anyway, let's get it unloaded. Probably get it on the tractor first, make sure that fits and works. That'd be nice. Then I'm probably gonna take the blades off, sharpen them, pop the covers off, see how the belts are, if there's even one there. And then also check the oil on the gear case so we don't go out and just, you know, make metal flake. Hmm. The old timer we bought this from had forks on a nice little Kubota tractor and we kind of just <whistles> shoveled it in. Well, you know what? I got forks too. Where are they? Oh, they're in here. And they're the slip-on kind, you know, JC Penny flavor. Maybe they were Sears. They just slip on, so Bentley's gonna help me. We're gonna throw those on, huh? Yep. See if this old Ford starts. Fuel on. Okay, let's see. Ignition, just a squish throttle. Normally I pull the choke, but let's just see what happens. Look at that. What a faithful old rig. I have no idea what that air filter's for. I just leave it there. Three point, up. Brake back on. This might prove to be a little tricky. That fella had a new tractor and has what you call hydraulic control. Where this here has a lack of it. It really doesn't matter what you do with these. It just, it decides how much upper and downer it goes and at what velocity. So this might be, you know, basically Old Blue is probably gonna get a new dent in the box. Great. Anyway, get these slid on here. This one's full of mud for some reason. No idea. I think 
the last time I used these, I accidentally dropped them on my riding lawnmower. Seems fine. Yeah. not it's not going as planned but i can see the blades now that's good the other feller had much longer forks i'm going to try to manually drag it up here to the end then we might have to put a strap on the top three point up over here something important like a hose try to you know bring it in a little bit more well this strap here says it's rated for 1200 pounds gonna find out nope most likely cause an injury or go through the back window there so that's good she is pretty snugged up so now i'm hoping if i could just tilt on these forks just a hair even if i could just hover it quick shoot the pickup forward and slam her to the ground works for me out is out Bentley's gonna move the truck up by the Monte Barrow. That way a guy could sneak the tractor in here, start hooking this thing up a little bit. Give her some throttle, dude. Okay, yeah, sure. When you're nine, you gotta learn how to drive pickups. That's all there is to it. All right, you're clear of the blade. I just forgot about this thing. We'll move her over here. I don't know. Jam it up against the propane tank? How's that sound, Bentley? Good. All right, I'll just back her in here. And we'll drop it there, okay? Another new leak. I mean, this is so good. I don't know why that would be leaking right now. In all seriousness, if someone knows like a joystick, Yuna thing, you know, one looks like a jet fighter that's easy to assemble and hose in you know i'm in the market this stuff's got to go maybe i'll even put new seals in the hydraulics probably not okay so we're getting there this is looking more like it should just got to try to get this lined up now well he double hockey sticks first of all the PTO shaft that I just closed my eyes and hoped that would work does not work for the old Ford. Also, the center section when I tried to lift this just absolutely exploded and shot metal 16 metric miles 
I don't know if that's a thing. I'm just saying it was violent. So that's busted. So there won't be any mowing today, but maybe I can get this part dolled up enough to back this thing in and see if we can at least lift it up and inspect the belts and the blades. That looks more correctish. I think the other split pin, cotter pin, pin holder inner, device upper flipped off. Got this adjusted where I think it's probably going to be pretty good. Cutting height is pretty close, actually, if I'm being honest with you. Sure. Yep. Well, let's fire this up, see if it lifts it without metal explosions this time. And we'll try to back it in towards the garage there. Tires do violently hit, so that's good. You can only raise this about two and 15, 16 inches. The only thing I trust on this is that the seat's uncomfortable. So if you use a cherry picker on a Monday, then it's a Farm King mower holder upper. Now a guy can scooch underneath there, but before we do that, let's do the easy part. Bring this up here. Sure. Yep. Wow. There we go. Mm-hmm. Got a belt. Oh, she's a dual belter. Yeah. So basically, this comes into a gearbox, goes down to a shaft, comes into a Polarizer 600, goes off to a Polarizer 200 on each side. Two plus two equals six, of course. So, I don't know. I guess I could just roll this. Do we got all blades turning? Yep. So three are turning, which means I'm not even gonna take that side off. I, I probably should check it. Yep, checked. Okay. So now we'll put this side back on and be done with it. Bentley Supreme's back there swapping tires on the go-kart and I said, hey, out of giggles. Let me try the Ooga Dooga with the same socket and I'll be dipped. Whirled these right off. Now, to me and you, this looks duller than Marilyn Monroe, but my grandpa would just be going, goodness gracious, look how sharp them are. They're brand new. Nope, we do have to sharpen these quite a bit. Now being a bladesmith here, fellas, it's an art. And not be confused with machetes, we're talking lawn equipment. I first learned this trait from Glenn Ng back in the 80s. Was later perfected and got my triple black belt by my grandpa Ellen. You gotta bring this material from back here all the way up. And then you bevel in the edge, see? Sometimes you gotta commit to it, put a new front edge on it. But the reason you do this is you gotta prepare to resharpen it. Bless their hearts, both of them would sharpen their blades three times a week and then hit everything within a quarter mile. This is a different unit guys started into. It's got a pretty good wallop in her and she's had some in the past. Next time this one comes in for service, I think I'll go ahead and just zip a new front edge on her. You don't want to get them too thin now, fellas. Settle down. You get heat in here. You see this turn brown and purple and blue? Well, you ruined it. Good job. Make another front edge and start over. They don't gotta be razor sharp. We're just cutting vegetation here, fellas. There we go. Now these are looking decent. A couple of these have some pretty good wallops in them, but I think I can get probably 62 and a half more sharpens out of those. 
I originally wanted a 72 inch deck. This is a 60 again. I think they come in like 42, 48, 54, 60, 72, blah, blah, blah. Six foot is about the biggest you can get. But anywho, the reason I didn't is the nine ends, believe it or not, are only rated at about 20 horse. And when they're tested, they're only about 12. These take 15 to 20 to run. So once that PTO is slanging, that puppy's gonna be full throttle basically. So tractor is maxed out for the mower. Eventually I'd like to get a newer tractor, but Moses are expensive. So work with what you got. This is gonna be just fine and I can always sell or use. Whoa, easy now, easy. I can always sell or use is what I was saying. So I'll pop these blades back on. And then what do we do? We check the gearbox? Maybe. Seems to pull just fine. I think the geometry is set up correctly here. Just gonna have to figure out what to do with the PTO shaft here. I'll get on the interwebs and bleep bloop it. I think he's ready for a bigger one. Well, it's a couple days later, actually. I got on Evil Bay, found me an inch and an eighth, I believe, to an inch and three eighths coupler. And it's got this roll pin, so it goes into the original PTO shaft and then adapts it to the new style here. And I did try it out on the way over here and it spins it, but I haven't cut any grass yet because there's really no grass to cut. It's, you know, we're in a drought. This is about as good as we're gonna get. It is a finish mower, so technically it should doll this up a little bit. So I'm gonna run her through here see how it works hopefully she's got enough hps remember i'm already underpowered for this at 60 inches because it's running the pump to the loader constantly so i'm already down a little power i've got my throttle modulation straps set there i'm going to try to run it at that and that way the tractor doesn't get hot and we sip on the fuel a little bit We'll idle her up more if we have to, but hopefully that's going to work. snag through the center here to get into the deeper stuff and it's uh finishing the mowing for me leaving a little bit of a trail which means it needs a little more pto rpm but i don't imagine you know well yeah grass will probably be about that tall when it needs cut so a little more rpm but it is cutting pretty nice there's no strips in it be easier to tell when it's greener so I'll give her some more RPM and let me see if I can get the agility finish up this little lot here and then we'll take a look at it well lickety doing the splits I'm done actually went really fast you can see how much more wider the path is than a typical rider lawnmower just got to get used to turning to get your rows down but Machine worked great. I did try first high. This is a two speed. It's actually really rare right here. So you got low and high and one high 
it definitely sounded like the mower was not happy. She was really singing. I'll have to do some research, but I think these are rated at 540-ish RPM. So I'll have to doubly do research, Googleize what the PTO output shaft RPM is. So I can figure out the right combination with the four speed, excuse me, technically three speed with the high low so I can get the right ripums out of it. But it did really good, really, really good. And this is more so for, you know, acreage that you let grow five, six, seven inches tall. Then you get in there and whack her down with this. And then you can come in with a, what do they call them? Circle turns, you know, the fast jazzies with the handles and whip up all the close stuff around the buildings like that. But I like it, I've always wanted one. Grandpa had one for many, many years and I finally got one. So now I guess we wait for it to rain. Oh yeah, tenant burned the yard down. Huh. If you wanna see more on the tractor, there's plenty to do. We've got to rebuild the loader, got to put belts on it. There's endless stuff on that tires let me know if you don't want to see it we'll do something else thanks guys for watching see you next time